Welcome to the iMac online video series. This video is flight path, aircraft attitude, and wind correction. Throughout this video, we will reference the 2015 Scale Aerobatic Rulebook. This will be the small print, 5.5 by 8.5. Rule 5.3 can be found on page 22. Scale aerobatics require all maneuvers within the sequence to be wind corrected. In normal flight with no wind, we expect the plane to fly in a straight line. If we add a wind component, the aircraft will be blown off track. Pitch and yaw may be used for wind correction. In the illustration below, the plane is yawed into the wind and therefore the track will be in a straight line. Same applies to a vertical line. Add the wind component and you expect the vertical line to be blown off track. Proper wind correction, the plane would pitch the nose into the wind and fly a perfectly vertical line. On a 45 line, the nose will be pitched down into the wind, maintaining a perfect 45 up line. The wind coming from the back side of the plane, the nose will be pitched up, again maintaining a perfect 45 up line. Drift observed on any line, horizontal, vertical, or 45 degrees, is downgraded at a half a point per 5 degrees deviation. In the illustration below, 10 degrees would result in a one point deduction. Picture the aircraft as a condensed dot. Judge the path or track this dot draws in the sky. This is the flight path or track of the aircraft's center of gravity. Speed changes also affect the attitude in relation to flight path. In a low speed situation, the nose would be pitched up maintaining horizontal flight. Rule 5.3 Wind Correction When judging a maneuver, understanding what constitutes wind correction and what is not is one of the toughest challenges. The general rule is that judges should ignore any aircraft change of attitude required to maintain a correct flight path. At the same time, the usual half point deduction per 5 degrees of deviation shall be applied to anything that is not related to wind correcting. In this illustration, we see the yaw attitude being used to maintain a perfect vertical upline. Judges should ignore attitude changes required to maintain proper flight path. Changes not related to wind correction are deducted at a half a point per 5 degrees of deviation. In some cases, to maintain a vertical upline, yaw may be changed. For instance, if the aircraft speed slows down or the wind increases, the yaw angle may be increased. This is to maintain a perfect vertical upline. Attitude changes due to a choppy wind or an inconsistent wind situation should be ignored by the judge. No deduction for wind correcting. Aircraft must remain in a wings level attitude while wind correcting in pitch and yaw axis. Deviations from wings level are deducted at a half a point per 5 degrees. 20 degrees from wings level is a 2 point deduction. Wind correcting is to be employed throughout the airspace. All maneuvers are to be flown in their perfect geometric shapes regardless of wind conditions. Loops and part loops must be round. To maintain a round loop, one would pitch into the wind or pitch out of the wind to maintain a perfect geometric shape. Vertical lines must track perpendicular to the horizon. Horizontal lines must track parallel to the X or the Y axis. Forty-five degree lines must track on a true forty-five. Drift observed on any line, horizontal, vertical, or forty-five degrees, is downgraded at a half a point per five degrees of deviation. Five degrees equals a half a point. So what does five degrees look like? Remember that one minute on a clock is six degrees. Most judges actually underestimate angular error. 
four specific maneuvers that are not wind corrected due to the aircraft being in a stalled condition. Wind drift is to be disregarded only during the stalled or near stalled portion. Stall turns or hammerheads, tail slide, spins, and snap rolls. Take a look at figure 7 from your rule book, page 25. This example is a hammerhead turn in a crosswind. On the upline, a one and a half point deduction was taken because of a 15 degree drift. The wind drift during the stalled portion should not be deducted. The aircraft picked up a 20 degree downline drift. Therefore, the score would not be higher than a 6.5. Rule 6.1, General Principles, from the rule book, page 26. The geometry of figures presented, including the shape, radii, angles, flight path, direction of flight, heading, and bank angle, must comply with the prescribed criteria. The distinctly recognizable start and finish of each figure within a horizontal line. The figure must be the one depicted on the flimsy, form B or C, appropriate to the direction of the flight chosen by the pilot. The grading criteria of each component will apply in a combination figure so that one overall grade for the figure will result. Let's take a look at the example below. Imagine the vertical upline, the track was off 10 degrees. It would result in a one point deduction. On the 45 downline, Let's say he over-rotated by 15 degrees. That would be another one and a half point deduction. Final upline, track again was off by 10 degrees, resulting in a one point deduction. The total score for this maneuver would be 6.5. This is the total figure score. The length of the lines and the size of the radii caused by the flying characteristics of the aircraft are not to be taken into account in the grading. Negative figures are graded by the same criteria as positive figures. Speed of the aircraft is not a criterion. The first figure of a sequence begins at the moment the aircraft departs from its wings level horizontal flight path. A figure is complete at the moment the aircraft returns to a wings level horizontal flight path of one fuselage length. The only exception to this are the exit lines of the Aresti Aerobatic Catalog, family 7.4 and 7.6. This would be square loops and octagon loops. Rule 6.3, zeros. Omitting a figure in the program would result in a zero. In the illustration below, let's say the pilot flies his downline on figure number one and omits the loop in the center and flies directly to the shark's tooth figure number three the loop would result in a zero. Flying a figure that deviates from the arresty drawing held by the judges for scoring purposes. In the example below, for example, if he did not fly the loop as figure two and flew a teardrop or a humpty bump, the net maneuver would be zeroed because it was not flown as drawn on the arresty. Adding a figure to a program will zero the next following correct figure except when it is necessary to perform a corrective maneuver due to the previous maneuver not being completed as per the program. Here's an example. The Humpty Bump was flown first and then the pilot would fly a loop or turns or something in the center and then fly the reverse half Cuban. The reverse half Cuban number two would be zeroed because a figure was added to the program. A corrective maneuver can only be a turn of 270 degrees or less and or a roll of 180 degrees or less. In this case, a brake penalty would be assessed against the competitor's raw score prior to its normalizing. Let's take a look at corrective maneuver and the application of a brake penalty. This is the example of the Humpty Bump figure number one, if it was flown correctly per the Arresti catalog. The aircraft has ended the maneuver inverted properly. Now let's take a look at an error that might be made. In this example, the pilot omits the half roll on the downline of the Humpty Bump. 
This would result in a zero of the Humpty Bump, maneuver number one. The pilot exited in the wrong attitude. The aircraft is upright when it should be inverted. The pilot then applied a proper corrective maneuver, in this case a 180 degree roll to put the plane in the correct attitude. Maneuver number two would then be scored normally. Corrective actions that exceed 270 degrees of turn and or 180 degrees of roll constitute a break in sequence. A break in sequence is characterized by the total departure from the sequence to be flown. Let's take a look at the same example we used before. In this case, the pilot omitted the half roll and exited the mover incorrectly. In maneuver number two, the pilot is now disoriented. He performs more than the 270 degree turn and more than 180 degree roll. In this case, the pilot flew around to get his bearings back before he could fly the next maneuver. In this case, maneuver number one receives a zero for admitting the half roll, a brake penalty is assessed, and maneuver number two is also zeroed because he has performed a break in sequence. Let's continue with zeros. Flying a figure in the wrong direction on the x-axis will result in a zero. The y-axis is non-directional. Any cumulative deviation in excess of 90 degrees in roll, pitch, or yaw axis that are not related to wind correction will result in a zero. Any figure or figures started and flown completely or partially on the pilot side of the deadline, the aircraft must clearly penetrate the deadline to receive a zero. If a judge misses one or more figures, or a part of a figure, such that a grade cannot be given with full confidence, the judge should then leave the score sheet spaces empty until the sequence is complete. He or she should then confer with the other judge and use his score for the missing figure. If both judges miss a figure, then ask the pilot to refly so he can receive a proper score. For more information, log on to mini-iac.com or arrestysystem.com.